rhythmic slapping sounds. What is going on YouTube? My moniker is White and today I'm going to take a look at the $5 game collection. For those of you that don't know uh, basically what the collection is, I started about one year ago, October of 2016, but I haven't had any fines for like four months. So we'll just go ahead and call it a wash. We'll call it one year. October of 16, I sold my big video game collection. I wanted to start a new one. The point of me wanting to start a new collection was just to kind of prove to you guys that game hunting was still active, stuff was still out there, and ironically the only thing I proved to myself is that in fact game hunting is pretty much dead. The start of the collection was good, the first few months was awesome, and then everything went to uh, disaster mode real fast. So today we're going to do kind of a quick overview of it, we'll talk about value and we'll talk about the future of game hunting or lack thereof. The first week I started with a $5 bill and the object was simple, use that $5 bill buy stuff, resell stuff, add money, add stuff to the bookshelves, and then keep going from there. And the first couple months were great. Specifically the holiday season of 2016, there was a lot of Craigslist deals, offer up deals, and that's expected. People need money immediately, so they're going to have to kind of throw out the like eBay price, individually priced nonsense, and sell good valued bundles uh, to get cash quickly. A lot of stuff on Craigslist will sit up for years. People will ask eBay prices and they'll be waiting for years for that money. So around the holidays, people need money, life or death, for gifts or travel or whatever. They'll list stuff at actual good prices and if you have cash, if you're doing well on money, that's when you scoop in to buy it. So the first few months were great. I got a bunch of bundles, GameCube stuff. The very first find I got for five bucks was kind of cheating. I had the find before I started the collection, before I even started the contest. So if I do do this again, I will start completely fresh, although I can't imagine this being successful a second time. Fines were good. Stuff started to burn out probably about June or July of 2017. Fines started to become few and far between, even on offer up. I was even looking for, you know, a $150 lot for 100 bucks. I was looking for bare minimum meat on the bone and I wasn't finding anything. And that got me to kind of fall and me and Fanta really shift gears to Black Friday deals retail shopping where you can actually find great deals at retail uh, be it for a collector or for a reseller you can find amazing stuff on shelves which is the easiest place to go shopping of course you don't have it's risk-free you walk into Walmart you buy the item and you walk out you're not meeting a sketchy person at a gas station or anything things have burnt out pretty rapidly uh, last find was like August the $5 game collection is kind of stalled people ask me constantly where are the videos I try to get them up but unfortunately we're not finding anything We'll hop into a quick overview here of $20 games. I'll probably do $20 plus games, and I'll just kind of show off some of them because uh, especially in 64 back here, you can't really see what the games are. Uh, then we'll talk a little bit more about the future. So jumping into the GameCube collection, we'll race through here. This is probably my favorite portion of the collection, and I think it's probably the most valuable system itself uh, as far as the library. We'll jump through everything, kind of reverse alphabetical order. Wario World. I think I got that on offer up. Zelda Wind Waker, I think I found this at a yard sale super early. Super Mario Sunshine, not complete, something I definitely need to work on and player's choice. A uh, game I always find, despite its incredible value. I traded in some junk at the thrift stores for this, uh, $60, and I got it at Bookman's in really nice condition. So there's no shame in trading in stuff at the thrift store. If you get the stuff for cheap, trade it in for a game you want. And uh, then you have that in your library. One of my favorite soccer games of all time, Mario Strikers. And for a sports game, retains some nice value. 
Star Fox Assault, never played it. Sonic Mega Collection, uh, just a compilation of Sonic games. Sonic Adventure DX, don't know anything about it. Pokemon XD, Gala Darkness, this is another one I think I got at Bookman's in mint condition uh, with some trade-in. Pokemon Coliseum bonus disc, have no idea where I got that. Uh, I don't remember finding that at all, in fact. Pikmin, awesome game. Another awesome game, Paper Mario, uh, fantastic spin-off on Mario RPG. Mario Party 7, not complete. Mario Party 6, which is complete and in nice condition. And Mario Party 5, we still need to find 4 in the future. Mario Kart Double Dash, not complete. I need to work on that. Kind of a fun game, Godzilla Destroy All Monsters. Just kind of a big rampage, beat them up in the cities. Really fun, underrated racing title, Kirby Air Ride. This is complete and in like mint condition. Uh, a couple Harvest Moon games. This one's in a tacky like blockbuster case. F-Zero GX, another one I got at Bookman's with a uh, trade-in. I've made, a lot of the collection was doing that. I would buy junky board games and then I would trade them in and get games that I actually wanted with Bookman's trade-in. That's how I was getting games I actually wanted. Uh, last but not least, Bomberman Generations. We'll jump into the N64. I'm just going to show you uh, either the really good games or the games that are worth north of $20. Because uh, there's a lot of shovelware, kind of schlock in the N64 lot. Starting off with Mario Party, decent condition. Awesome condition, Banzo Kazooie. Still need to get Tui. Uh, Donkey Kong 64, the kind of famous yellow cart. Need to get the Sharpie off. Harvest Moon 64, very valuable N64 game. Uh, Super Smash Bros. Melee, kind of value has dropped over the years. It used to be worth quite a bit of money five years ago. Zelda Ocarina of Time. Pokemon Stadium. Pokemon Stadium 2 with that beautiful two-tone uh, gold and silver with the shiny after finish. Star Fox 64. Diddy Kong Racing. I never liked it as much as Mario Kart. Yoshi's Story. Never played uh, in its entirety. I've just done little playthroughs. And then, of course, Mario 64. Uh, not very good condition. I thought I remember getting a great condition copy of this game. Uh, maybe I sold the wrong one because this doesn't look good at all. But uh, it'll be an upgrade in the future. So that's it for the kind of valuable N64 games. We'll take a look at Xbox now. We'll get into PlayStation and Xbox valuable titles. And probably my favorite find of the entire first year of the $5 game collection was Marvel vs. Capcom. Uh, on shelves at Goodwill for $2.99 and the case is cracked but the artwork and everything's in great condition and the disc is in awesome condition uh, $2.99 for this game is highway robbery uh, and the fact I got it at a retail store not at a garage sale um, pretty amazing find Shadow of the Colossus on PlayStation 2 I don't even know if it's a valuable game it's a great game kind of an open Open world, wandering around, and then these massive boss battles where you have to climb up these colossi. Another really good Goodwill find, Metal Slug Anthology. I remember playing this game at Subway a lot as a kid. Uh, it was on the arcades. Really fun pick up and play game. Doesn't need a lot of thought to it. Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2. Found this game quite often. Uh, a little bit more valuable on Xbox, I believe, but still a really fun, I guess we'll call it a dungeon crawl. Top down, gauntlet style game. Elder Scrolls Morrowind Game of the Year Edition. I don't even know if this is valuable. I know it used to be. Uh, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a Game of the Year Edition of a really famous PC game ported onto the Xbox. And a lot of fun. Hasn't aged particularly well. Neither has Skyrim, if we're honest. Star Wars Battlefront 2. Always a valuable game and always common. You'll find it in every big Xbox lot ever. And it will always sell for like $30 to $50. People still play it. Something I figured out right now, in fact, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 on the original Xbox, but inside is just another copy of Marvel vs. Capcom, Capcom on the PS1, so I'll be selling one of these. It's too valuable of a game to keep two of it for no reason. Uh, I got both of these at Goodwill on the same day, so I guess I just never really paid attention or was just like drunk that day. And then maybe my favorite original Xbox find of the year, Alien vs. Predator Extinction. Got this at a garage sale for like $2.00. Pretty valuable game and a franchise I really like or I really used to like. Uh, Alien Covenant was complete schlock. But um, really fun lore, really fun combat. It's kind of like an RTS and it's, it's just a timeless franchise. So 
even though this game's like 15 years old, it still lives up really well because the franchise continues to get movies and continues to be popular. Let's take a look really quick at accessories. Taking a look at some of the systems and accessories I have. Uh, probably my second favorite find. This in a glass case at Goodwill, complete in box Game Boy Advance SP, uh, complete with charger, instruction booklet, and a really nice condition system. Just kind of blew me away to see this in the glass shelf. Goodwill would almost always put stuff like this on their auction website now. That's why we don't find anything cool. And the system, as you guys can see, is in awesome condition. Jumping into the GameCube, uh, kind of a, I don't know if I want to call it tacky or neat and tasteful, but uh, Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, like stickers all over my GameCube. Really well done, really well placed. It was obviously an adult that did this and not a kid. Um, so kind of neat. I don't know why I decided to keep this one, but it's just, I don't know, it's fun. And then moving into the GOAT controllers. Wavebird uh, have the kind of the flat gray and then the shiny silver one. Uh, my favorite controller of all time and always valuable, always over 30 bucks in value if you can find these. Pick them up 100% of the time. So as you can see, uh, collection's going along great. I have not done the math, but I would guess the collection's worth in the ballpark of $500 to $1,000. Uh, eBay values if I were to sell everything individually, which is annoying. Obviously, if you sell an N64, you want to ship your controllers with it, but if you want to really get money, you can sell the controllers individually and stuff and make more money, technically. So, future, I'm having some problems with YouTube, I really am, and so is everyone. Obviously, they've recently cut off every single small YouTuber is now going to not get money. Some people support that, a lot of people are incredibly butthurt. The amount of money that those small channels were getting was so small. The real problem with YouTube, of course, is that... Channels that are making money are the ones that are going to be recommended. Simple business, YouTube wants to get money. They're getting money as channels make a lot of money. So they're helping the channels that make a lot of money get more views. And people that are small channels, you're gonna get The problem I've had, of course, is that we're cutting off all these people from money. We're cutting off recommended channels and then people like Logan Paul still getting views, still getting money on his views. They cut him off from the premium sponsors or whatever. He's still getting thousands of dollars a month and they're cutting out millions and millions of YouTubers from any sort of money. And the problem, of course, goes back all the way to AdGate uh, over a year ago. Problems with, you know, terrorist organizations having a Walmart commercial in front of their video. Sponsorships jumping ship. And I'm just, I'm not jumping for joy about YouTube. I don't know what Fanta's opinions are on it either. But long story short, I definitely want to get into other forms of social media. I want to do some a lot more Instagram stuff. I want to do a lot more Twitch stuff. Um, I will have a link in the description to my Twitch account. I'm going to start streaming. I'm going to start doing giveaways on that channel. Probably start giving away some $20 games, stuff that I don't really care too much to keep, just to get the Twitch following big. Everyone I've ever played video games with says you should do Twitch. I really didn't have that much interest in doing it. I say a lot of horrific things. But everyone says, hey, you have the perfect personality. You should do this. People should watch you. So I definitely want to get into Twitch. Got an amazing gaming setup. I'll take, show you guys that real quick. Yeah, I recently spent about a grand, probably the last couple weeks, on this gaming setup. Xbox One X down there. And then a 4K monitor. And then these had, this is a really nice budget headset, by the way, if you don't have, if you don't have a headset. Um, I can't even remember what they're called. They're at Best Buy for 70 bucks, And they're probably the best sub hundred dollar gaming headset you can get they're not wireless but if you're on console you shouldn't need wireless headset for any reason so yeah i definitely want to twitch uh i definitely want to start doing some videos that are not game hunting as i've said game hunting is in a tough spot right now it's in a real tough spot i have not found even a decent deal for months my biggest problem with the five dollar game collection in its early stages was i would go to goodwill i would find like a single game and then i wouldn't find anything for two weeks so keeping track of that game, subtracting money, and adding that game to the collection was, was becoming a problem. Big deals are easy. Okay, I'm down 100 bucks, and here's 50 games I got. Small deals are harder to manage. Not sure if I'm going to keep doing this collection. I'm definitely going to keep collecting games. I don't know if I'm going to keep the same formula going. You guys can pretty much let me know in the comment section. If this video gets you know hundreds and hundreds of likes, I'll try to keep doing the $5 game collection. But it is getting difficult. And YouTube itself is becoming kind of the villain, so I'm not sure. The future of me and Fanta, me and him will sit down and do some videos and talk about it. We definitely want to do some green screen, shopgoodwill.com. 
we're going to keep doing the thrift store videos. Those are really, really fun to shoot and they're quite successful and they're no work. Yard sale game hunting is really stressful because we go out, we'll go out for weeks without a find and we'll have nothing to show for it. Thrift store will go out one day for three or four hours and we'll have a video. People will love the video even if we don't find anything. It keeps the community happy. So let me know, basically leave a thumbs up, follow my Twitch in the comment section, additional nonsense, follow my Twitch stream. Gonna start doing a lot of PUBG, FIFA, Halo, anything big on the Xbox One, I'll be playing, maybe even the new Call of Duty. Hopefully playing with Fanta some, although he's been playing some nonsense, silly, stealth shaded game that copied PUBG, I'm not even sure what it's called. And also leave a comment, uh, let me know how your game hunting has gone. Give me the whole year, give me all of 2017. How did game hunting go for you that entire year? For me, it started off amazing until I hit about summer and then everything burnt out really quick. And I will see you guys, we'll be back with another thrift store video probably next weekend. Take care everyone.